This is a demonstration of the Smart Draft Construction Note Tools. The commands that make up the Construction Note Tools are the Construction Note Manager, which allow you to create your Construction Note lists, and the various options for creating the list, and putting the list in the drawing, and putting the notes in the drawing what layer, what fonts you use. The construction note tool, which is what the operators are going to use to place the bubbles, to look at the list of nodes, to create the list in the drawing, or update the list in all the associated drawings. Update construction note list to update just the current drawings list. Changing the width of a construction note list. A construction note list is AutoCAD table. You can just stretch it wider or narrower, but then some of the columns change width or height, and it doesn't look quite right. With this command, it actually allows you to change the width and make sure that the, the tag column stays the right width and that the height of each row stays correct also. So let's start off with creating a construction note list with the construction note manager. The first time you start the tool, it doesn't know of any notes files. We'll open up the last one if there is any. But here we're going to create a new one. We'll call it, we'll have to give it a project name. And you can assign it a number if you have one in your company. Also, there is an option to set a root path. So let's say you have these out in a folder on the server and it's a pretty deep path. When you want to start associating drawings, you can set a root path so that when the drawings are listed, the root path portion of it is not displayed on each drawing. The first thing that it does is it creates an empty category called construction notes. You can rename this or add additional categories. Let's say you're working in a very large project that has multiple disciplines, so you can create multiple construction note categories. Just a caveat, though you can rename it, once the operators start placing tags in a drawing, don't rename it because it will cause problems. Another thing, if you have multiple construction note categories, make sure that each category is using a different symbol. Otherwise, when you do the automatic updates, they will not work properly either because it won't know which one of the categories to use from a file. So if you want to use the same symbol, use a different file. When adding notes, there are three ways to add notes. If you have some existing construction note files out on your server because you've been using this for a while, you can import notes from an existing file. And it'll just read that file and ask you, do you want to bring that information in? And you can do that that way. Another way would be to import from an ASCII file. An ASCII file is something that an administrative assistant can set up where you have tag number, letter, or a combination thereof, a comma, and the note that is associated with that tag. If any of these lines start with a semicolon, the program believes that it is a comment and will not be added. If there's a blank space in the file, it will skip it. If it doesn't find both a tag and a description, it skips that entry thinking that it was not correct. And the last way would be one at a time typing in your tag and putting in your note. So you could do that that direction too. Once you have it, you can double click on it, change the tag, maybe you misspelled something, or you can change the note. But remember, once you place, start placing tags and you renumber them, then it doesn't go and re renumber the tags per the old tag numbers. It will just say, okay, now tag 2 is equal to this note, and if you update the notes, they'll update. But it doesn't go back and change tag numbers in drawings that have already been tagged. You can re remove. So I can take a, a note away. And the notes will not automatically sort by tag number, since they can be letters or numbers. So you can use the up and down arrow to move them around. So let's import that ASCII file that I showed you earlier. And that is these grading notes. You can see that it brought in 88 notes very quickly. Next, when tags and notes are placed in a drawing using the command construction note command. You can determine what layer those notes will be placed on, what symbol will be used, and the width factor. The width factor is important. 
and there are two choices, 0.65 or 0.8. With a 0.65, you can have up to three characters with 0.65 before it starts getting larger to accommodate more characters, or 0.8 allows you to have up to two characters before it starts enlarging the tag symbol. If you were doing more of an architectural type setup that you can have the tag symbol just be a piece of text. So in this one, we're going to do circles. Next is, because the construction note list will be a standard AutoCAD table object, you can only put it on one layer. So here is the option of what layer they'll go on. And do you want the borders around each cell or not? Do you want the title to be included on that? And if not, uncheck the title option. And then what do you want the title to be? What justification and underline or not underline? Next is what style will the text be for that title? What size? And this is the printed size. If you're in model space, it'd be times a horizontal scale. In paper space, that would be the actual text height. It's going to be by layer by default, but if you want it to be a different color, you can specify that color. When it comes to each individual note, you can specify the style height, I mean the style that will be used for the font and the height, and then what color it will be inside the table also. Once you have all your settings, you can say OK, and then this file will be saved and you can start using it. One other thing that this can do is you can associate drawings to a category. So we have our construction note category. We can go over here and associate drawings. So you can go out, add one at a time, through the add button. Well, actually, you bring this up and then you can you can select multiple. So if I came out here onto the hard drive and looked for my projects folder and picked these three files, you can see that it added those three files and it found them in that folder, telling you that you can specify a root. Here you're seeing the full path listed. Once you have them in here, you could actually go over here and say, I want to pick a root folder. Now, it hasn't removed it yet, but if I say fix, you can see that it's taken the beginning part of this root folder right off of that, those files. So now the, the, the list is very short. So what happened is if I was to save this and then later say update associated drawings, it would go to each one of those drawings and apply this list to the settings that are in those drawings. So that's one way to add associated drawings. Next is you can pick a folder and I'll pick every drawing in that folder. You can remove as you just saw or I can fix paths. So now we have our, our note file set up, our construction note file set up. Now we can actually go into our drawing and start tagging things. And there's two ways to tag. You can actually bring up the construction notes tool which will show a list of the construction notes, and if you have multiple categories, you can select them. Again, it would if there were multiple files, it would show you the last 10 files, but it's going to bring up the last one that was in this drawing. You'll see that from the construction note file, it'll tell you what symbol is going to be placed. And now you have three options. It's going to place the tag only, so in this case, a circle with the tag 1 in it, or it will place the tag with the actual text protect in place behind it, or it will just read the note and won't place a tag symbol at all. So if you have a, want to just manage some, some general notes that you put in the file, put in the project a lot, you could actually have a different category called general notes and place them, and you're never going to make a table about those because there won't be any tags. But you could use this tool to place those notes in the drawing or in a set of drawings. So we'll do tag only at the moment. Next is, do you want a leader? Do you want to just put a, the, your circle with the tag, or do you want to have a leader and then the tag? And what kind of leader do you want? Do you want one with angle points, or do you want one with arc? So we'll do arcs. What do you want at the end point? Nothing, an arrowhead, and a dot, the integral symbol, which is like a little squiggly line to indicate a, a, a wider area and not just a pinpoint of a particular item. And you can actually place per note up to in this case right now, two leaders, so you can specify a, a broad area or point to two different things. If you need to point to two or three, three or something, you're going to have to add another leader manually. When it comes to placing the rotation angle, you can have it automatically go to view twist zero. You can specify it on the screen, or you can specify an angle, and every time you place one of those tags, it will use that angle. I will show these list options later, because this is when actually placing a list 
from tags that are in the drawing, and since we don't have any tags, this would not mean anything at this time. So I want to place tag number one. I pick it off the screen or double click and it will use whatever settings down here in the notes options and the note rotation angle. So if I double click, it will say select the first point for the leader. And because I'm doing an arc, it will ask for an arc point. And you can actually see that it placed that number one. It stayed in the command so I can place more number ones. And if I bring the command up again, it will remember the last one. So like if I want to place a six, I can place multiple sixes, multiple sixes at one time. But if I bring up the command again, it remembers that six was the last one I used. So now I can start placing sevens, or if I was way down here in the list, 85. One nice thing about this, since it's all integrated into SmartDraft, is don't have to bring up the notes tool command to place tags. They're just these various options that are right here in SmartDraft. You could bring up circle reference, see that leader is set to arc, three points, symbol is circle, and now it asks for the symbol text. And if you knew the number, 12, I can place a 12. 15, 16, 23, 55, so you don't need to use that n n construction notes dialog box if you find that this is a faster way of placing those tags. But you can if you don't have the note numbers memorized. You could also use the arc leader option with tag symbol set, go options, and set your tag symbol to the right symbol type, circle in this case. You're going to have your width factor showing there. and do the exact same thing with the prompt at the end. So these will will place the same type of tags that the other program construction notes places, and they'll all be able to be used because they're <clears throat> nothing special. It's just going to look for the name of that block. That comes to the point, can we use our own named block? And the answer is no. In this particular case, circle is D-C1. And I noticed if you have a different block, you're just going to have to, you can use the rename command within the drawing and change it to D-C1. And then this tool, when you want to create notes, will be able to find that D-C1 block and then create notes because it will read the, the first attribute for the tag number, compare that to the list, and place the notes list. So now if we want to place a set of notes based on these tags that were placed in this viewport, you could say I want to add or update in the current the notes options. The other would be to update in all the associated drawings, but we haven't placed any in our associated drawings and currently there are no associated drawings. And then there would be different ways of placing the notes. The whole list, selecting one or more viewports, and then it reads the tags that are visible within that viewport screen. If there were more tags that are off in a different area, it would not grab those. By selecting notes from this list. So if it was select notes, and you just wanted that set of notes, you just highlight the ones you want, and that's what it would do. Remember, if you want to update later, it's just going to have these same numbers. So the only thing that's going to do is maybe fix a misspelling. So if you want to actually be more dynamic and grab what notes tags are showing in a viewport, use the Select Viewport option. Same with selecting the drawing tags in the drawing. You might use this if you were placing notes in model space because then you would have because there's no viewport in model space you would just select it with the window. It doesn't remember the window, it just remembers the tag numbers. Therefore if you do an update it's not going to be dynamic. It's just going to use the same numbers over again. Changing any text that you may put in the notes section but not looking for more tags in that same selected window space because it doesn't know what coordinates you use to select. So let's change it to selected viewports. Next is an important option called Update Associated Drawings List. 
So as you place these note lists in a bunch of drawings in a project, it can add that drawing name to the drawing associated drawing list. So later you can say update, and it'll go out in a script file type fashion and update every single drawing that those notes are in. So let's do this. We have our settings for note options. Say create a list. Select one or more viewports. After you select the viewports, hit enter. Select your insertion point and specify a width. And it will actually add those drawing notes that it found the tags for into the file. But now that you have your tag list, your construction note list in here, you could actually change the width of that. And then this will fix those width issues. You'll never be able to do narrower than the title because it can't make a, it can, but it will be very weird. Then the header will be too narrow. But if you were to just use the standard, you can see how it will change the standard um, grips. You can see how it made the construction note first column too wide. You can come in here and manually fix that. But if you don't want to have to do that, you can use this change with. But it is a standard table, AutoCAD table, and this will allow you to change the width of it. So if you were to come in here and add additional notes, we can come and see that, that you have 1, 4, 6, 12, 15. Let's add a 35 and a 45. So if I come in here and 35, and 45 and now say update the list settings the new tags and it added 35 and 45 to the list that is the end of the demonstration on the construction note tools thank you